So uh, welcome everybody to another Beyond the Art of Stand. This is Adam. Uh, I'm actually going to be the one giving the presentation today, which is going to be pretty fun. And uh, I thought with some recent updates to Substance Painter, uh, especially the 8.3 update, I think we can have another discussion about what we can see. Uh, I think the coolest thing about this is that uh, we are thank so thankful for that we have a new update to the baking engine. So now we can actually praise the croissant. So as you can see, the new baking settings are actually gonna be within uh, Substance Painter itself, but you have to click on this little croissant uh, button to get to it, which is great. So, and as you can see, Chopper is either very sad, but also really excited about <laughs> this new stuff coming out. So, which I am very too. Uh, so yeah, we the, the bit, one of the big updates that came with the new update to Substance Painter is that we have a big baking update. So. Uh, one of the cool things is that they've actually enhanced it quite a bit so that we can now see our model when we're baking. And the nice thing about that is that this has allowed us to really kind of dial in and figure out if we have any baking errors. So no more get like a guessing game or anything else like that. So uh, I've basically designed something to kind of go over some of the updates and see what's going on. Maybe relearn some new things if you've got uh, if you remember how to bake and everything, or if this is just your first time trying to learn about baking, this would be a good introduction to all this stuff. So, uh, one of the big things about this is that we're going to be going through each menu, and uh, as you can see on the on the slide here, but then also just kind of like doing it uh, as a live demo as well. So this is all going to be about that texture baking update that is oh so happy about because <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, so uh, we'll go through each of the different. Uh, things that can happen. As you can see, uh, now to get into the baking mode, that's actually a different mode. Uh, before, you would have to press a couple buttons to get to it or baking or go to the mode menu, but now there's a little croissant that we can go and click, which is the one I'm always going to be going to because it's probably one of the best ways to see the new baking mode. But again, that doesn't mean that there are other ways to jump into the mode. You can always go to the uh, mode menu up on the top bar, or you can go back to the bake mesh maps as well. But if you're still too lazy about that and you want to be a little bit more efficient, F8 on keyboard shortcut will bring us to the, the section on the right. So the nice thing about that is that this is allows us to jump into the new baking mode, which is great. It's a little intimidating, but it's really cool. Uh, so one of the next things we get uh, uh, that's been updated is the texture set and UV tiles. Mm -hmm. So now there's quite a bit of, uh, it's a cleaner way of actually choosing which texture sets you want to bake. If you're using UV tiles, uh, you can also go into that and it's basically like UDIMs in a way to start texture baking certain ones. So the nice thing about this is that we can actually check them on or check them off. Uh, unless you're just using one texture set less, then you can go right there, which is great. And that has allowed us to really visually see that, which is really nice. It's a, a more cleaner look in a way. Uh, and then after that, we have the mesh uh, map bakers. Uh, this is, allows us to check on or off our different uh, maps that we want to bake. Uh, but one of the nice things about this is that this is really updated quite a bit is that there's new chain link icon. So if you guys have a bunch of different texture set settings now, you can actually go in and choose to either uh, have different settings per uh, different texture sets. So say like a good example is if you're doing something for like a, like an, a multiplayer weapon and you have to change a magazine or you have to go in and basically bake a new ambient occlusion map for that one thing, you can actually de-link it, change the settings, and then rebake just that one texture set, which is great because now you don't have to do it for the entire set. It gives you a lot more control, which is really cool. And it's just a lot cleaner too, which is nice. So it's the big mesh map baker, which is great. Uh, one of the cooler things that has happened now, too, is that we've gotten a lot uh, more information from the baking logs. So at the bottom of the menu, they're going to have the baking processes, the high poly parameters, and the matching by name. So the cool thing about this is that if you bake and you have any errors, it'll tell you what's going on just by hovering over the little uh, icon or the warning icon. Uh, but one of the other big things that's really helpful, too, is that if you're going to be baking by mesh name, uh, and you have something not baking, and you're like, why is this not baking? You can now see that if your naming conventions are wrong or right, which is great, because now you don't you can know exactly which ones are, are missing, and you don't have to look through your uh, uh, 3D package of choice to be like, okay, did I name this right or did I name this wrong? So it's really cool to have that there, which is nice. 
The other big thing too is just this is kind of the same old, same old. We kind of know what's going on here. The mesh map settings, we've seen this all the time. But again, we're just getting it to the point where you can actually choose a lot of different uh, settings now, which is great uh, here. Uh, one of the big updates here is that now we can, we can undo, which is really cool uh, for like if we're changing the distance or anything. Uh, the other big thing too is that now it the max frontal distance and max rear distance is added another decimal point, I think. So now we have a lot more finer control when it comes to setting how far we want the cage uh, and helping out this information out, which is great. The other big thing is that uh, remember common settings equals your home. So wherever you have common settings, that's like your base start, you can start there. And if you wanna go down the line and change other settings within each map, like if you wanna have more rakes cast for your ambient inclusion, or if you wanna change how your ID map is laid out, you have to choose those uh, in the section on the left, okay? But again, that will change what your mesh map settings look like. Uh, but one of the biggest thing now, and one of the thing that I've been happy about mostly is that now we actually get to see a preview of our uh, model and we get to see a preview of our mesh. So there's a lot more, it's like a visualizer to, to see what's going on. The other big thing about that is that you can see in the little GIF here is that now we can see if we're missing rays when we move our, uh, our, our cage up or down. We can see exactly how our low poly is handling that, which is great because now this is allowing us to visualize, oh, do we need to go back into our modeling package uh, and change some things around? Do I need to uh, make sure I name everything right or, or change the, just the max frontal and distance and, or rear distance? No more of a guessing game of like, oh, did this work or did this catch everything or did I not catch everything? Uh, a lot of feedback, which is really cool. There's some other cool things that can happen too, like we can actually start to see if we have any hard edges uh, missing seams, which is cool. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later when we're actually jumping in the demo. Uh, but the nice thing about that is that this allows us to really kind of dive deep and visually see how our bakes are doing, and it saves a lot of time, which is wonderful. Uh, so this is kind of like the texture baking workflow. This is the new scene, as you can see. Uh, Again, uh, just a good idea is to start with your texture set list, see which one you want to work with that's in the top left, and then you move down to your mesh map parameters so you can go into and choose which ones you want to bake. Then you move over to your mesh map settings, change everything, put things into the scene or your high definition model if you need to, and then run it, uh, and then see if you need to do anything with your baking logs, and then also adjust anything you need to do with your uh, visualizer, which is really good. And the cool thing about it too is that the visualizer works like any other, uh, like just like how we would go about painting our models. So the view controls are just the same thing. So it won't be any different, which is great. So this is just a kind of a cool way to kind of have the flow going, which is great. And then after you get everything done, you get some really nice breaks and you can texture it up how you want to do it, which is great. So the big thing I want you guys to do too is if you guys have any, if you have any confusion about this new stuff. I highly suggest taking a look at some of the documentation and the YouTube video that was posted about this. It's a lot of good information there. But with that said, let's jump into Substance Painter and I'll just give you guys a little bit of a live demo. So if we go to the new button here, I can change my document resolution. I'll go ahead and select my uh, Jade Staff, which is really cool, hit OK. Hit this in here. And again, remember, we are all about our croissant overlord right here. Okay, so if you want to, you click on this and this will bring you to the mode here. Again, like I said before, we can always go to mode and go to baking here if you want to. Uh, but the hotkey for that is just F8. So now we have our in the new mode. Okay, so same old, same old. I can hold Alt and left click to move my model around, which is great. I can start to see how my, uh, I can move my lights around if I need to take a view my uh, model in here as well. Uh, but the main thing is that now we actually have this view, uh, viewfinder, which is great. So I only have one texture set, so we can just leave it here, which is great. Uh, and then the next thing we can go down to is if I wanted to though, I can actually just check this off if I don't wanna bake this. Now I can go to the common settings in the different maps I wanna bake. So I probably don't need to bake everything for this example. So again, I can just go back and just turn off everything. I'll just leave the ambient occlusion and probably the normal map on there. But as you can see, every time I click on here, my mesh map settings are changing. 
So if you ever wanted to get a little bit more out of your ambient occlusion, you can up the rays, choose some ever uh, some changes here. But any other here allows you to have a little more control over uh, certain maps that you want to bake, which is great. And again, remember, if you ever want to go back home, remember common settings is your home. This is where a lot of this information is. Okay. Uh, so let's bring in a high poly because this is where uh, it's really going to shine with our new visualizer on the right. So I'm going to throw this guy in here. I'm going to grab my high poly, hit OK. And then I'll take a second to get it in there. And then after it's in there, we can now utilize our visualizer to really see what's going on here. So after this goes through, now we've got our high poly and our low poly. You can see that we have a blue mesh and like a, a more of a cage kind of moving up, right? So with that, we can take a look at these visualization settings here and I can go in and I can actually open up these drop downs to start to see certain things on my model, okay? Uh, you can see what color changes they do. This is the mesh, this is matching error, the colors change different, the cage surface, wireframe missing seams on hard edges, which is great because now we can actually see what's going on because before we would have to kind of base our own, we just have to like figure it out on our own. So the cool thing I can start doing now is if I start to push in, uh, move my max frontal distance up and down, you can start to see that the cage is being uh, pushed out, okay? And remember, when we come to baking, we want to make sure that our model is efficient enough because we don't want to have to bake something that looks like this because this will give us a lot of errors when we're starting to bake. It, it, it's, it's not as accurate as we want it to be. So now, with this ability to see exactly what's going on, we can start to get it really nice and close to our model. But as you noticed, the closer I get to my model, the more red is showing up, right? So what that means is that I'm actually my rays or my, my cage or my net is not far enough out to grab the information to bake down. So now that we actually see that, I can go in and have a little bit of play to actually push my mesh up a little bit, right? Which is great. Uh, and it's just wonderful to be able to see exactly like how my model is doing and everything else, which is great. Uh, so the other thing too, just to kind of show you a little bit of some other things of why we can actually really help us, is if I go down to my matching and I change it by mesh name, you can see I have an error. So if I go to my error, you can see that my low poly mesh is not catching with my high poly. So one thing I can do is I can take a look. It's like, oh, well, what, why is this not working? Well, my, I think I, my names are the same, but my suffixes are not the same. Well, the, the, they're not the same per what substance needs to grab. So in substance right now, they say, hey, I need low and high, but right now I've made it LP and HP. So normally I probably should have just stuck with high and low so I don't have to change it. But all I need to do is just change this to LP, hit enter, and then also go to high and then go to HP and look at that. Now we have everything lining up perfectly, which is great. If I didn't have anything looking perfectly, it would give me the error. And then I would can go back to my modeling package and change it up if I need to, which is great. Uh, so the other thing that can really help you out too, there's a lot, uh, uh, if you guys know about the UV seams and hard edges, if we're going to start to use hard edges in our model, uh, we need to make sure that we are either cutting the UV apart if we're going to be using a hard edge in that location, uh, or we're going to have to make sure that our edge is soft. But the cool thing about this new visualizer now is that it will basically tell you on your model if you have any er errors of what's going on. So if I take a look up here, I can see that these pieces are actually, or these edges are not properly uh, softened, okay? So now I can go back to my modeling package of, uh, of my choice. I can go back here. I know I can go to my uh, edges around here and I can fix uh, those guys here, which is great. So I can go to soften. I'll soften those edges. I'll go back and I'll export my uh, model back to my document here. Hit my document. And now that that's all set there, I can go back to Substance Painter. I can go to Edit. The cool thing about this too is we can re-import meshes. Uh, so if I saved over my old file that I used to bring in here, all I need to do is just hit re-import mesh and then once I re-import it, you can see now that I fixed that error and that line is gone. So now I don't have to worry about like what is not working. I don't have to go digging for everything and it's, it's wonderful. 
right? So now that we have everything prepped and ready to go, I have everything there. I'm gonna maybe just bring my output size a little bit bigger. And now all I need to do is if I wanna bake my mesh meshes and stuff, I can go down here. So I need to go back and check. Looks like I accidentally had the staff mat checked off. Uh, again, there's a little drop down button here. Uh, this is either do I wanna bake the selected textures or do I wanna bake the entire uh, staff mesh or the texture set list, okay? So I'll just go ahead and bake my selected textures. This will take a little bit, but uh, as you can see, it's a lot faster and a lot easier. And the cool thing about this too is that if I just wanna hide the visualizer to see how my bake looked like, I can do that, which is great. And so now I got my little guy here, which is really cool. Uh, and then I can go and fix everything up and adjust things if I need to and maybe play with some settings and go up of a higher level or anything else like that, which is really nice. And then after I'm done, I can just go back to painting mode. Boop. And I can go back and do my painting like every, every, whenever I need to. So if I really want this to be a pure brass thing, I can just throw a little model on there and I have all my uh, settings all perfectly for it. So that's basically the big, big part of the update. Uh, again, you can go into a little bit more information on the uh, YouTube video uh, that was linked in the presentation. Uh, but the other big thing is that just this is a lot faster for us and a lot easier to us to understand what's going on on our baked model. So if anybody has any questions, uh, just let me know.